What's next? So well, actually, um, during our little break here, mm-hmm. we uh, found a bottle of our OJ. Oh, right. So we've got that to try. Ooh. So, uh, so th- this came up a few times. I'll set this here so we get... Um, so Oja, this is a Baltic Porter. First the brewery, this... Whoa. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, that's fine. It's been in the, uh, been in there a little while. Okay. Yeah. This is one of our older batches, then. Yes, yeah. it's a very old uh, batch. <laughs> thanks. It's a big beer, too. It's 8.9%. Um, yeah. It's a fun one. Uh, we, we have a lot of fun with this. So I mentioned we've got the, uh, the Oreo version of it coming mm-hmm. up. I mean, we've aged this in all sorts of different kinds of barrels. We've finished it with uh, different fruits. It's just a fun beer. So... There's that for you. May want to let that settle for a little bit. Okay. That's a fun thing too. To get it uh, bubbles and beer. So we're all used to the CO2 bubbles, like mm-hmm. the carbonation you get mm-hmm. with like beer and soda and things like that. Um, if you've ever been like, drinking at a bar, um, like uh, Guinness taps usually have like a funny spout. They're always on nitrogen. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason they do that, and uh, whenever you see like a nitro beer, um, nitrogen produces a finer bubble than carbon dioxide. And so that's why it's so smooth to drink. We're doing a really fun one at the brewery right now. We do a classic American lager called Iowa Eagle. It's just our introductory beer. It's uh, the, every time someone walks in the tap room and they're like, hey, I usually drink Coors Light, what do you have? Mm. This is the, our classic version of an American lager. It's a good stepping stone into all brother styles. Um, we thought it'd be fun to put that beer on nitrogen. I've never encountered like an American light lager on nitrogen before. Um, we weren't quite sure what to expect, and what we've created is possibly the world's most like crushably chuggable beer that exists. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of the uh, it's become like all of our go-to like after work pint now. Um, you should see our brewer Mike like kick one of those back. Like it's just this he's so good at it. It's just this nice even pour. Maybe two or three swallows, and the entire pint's just gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right now that's it's that beer is only available in our tap room. Um, maybe as we uh, move into cans, we'll figure out, like, do, like, the nitrogen cans of it so people mm-hmm. can take it out with them. I'd, I'd think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm just curious. We're using this type of glass. Is there a certain kind of glass that makes beer taste better than others? Or can yeah, you just yeah. take any kind of glass and dump a beer in there and it... I mean, you you can drink beer out of any kind of glass. I'm going to backtrack and answer the question really quick. Um... So we're moving everything over to cans here soon. Mm-hmm. So by the summer, you'll find all of our styles available in cans. That's where the, a lot of the industry is moving towards that. We kind of always intended to do cans and not do glass. And you know, a lot of people is like, well, I prefer beer out of a bottle. Or like, honestly, when it comes down to it, cans are better for beer quality. They're better for the environment. And it's just kind of easier to deal with. And whether the beer is coming in a bottle or a can, you really should pour it into a glass. Now, the shapes of the glass, yeah, beer is older than wine. Beer has all of the different flavors and complexities that wine does. And for different styles of wine, you get different types of glasses. Like white wine glasses are usually a little taller and narrower. Mm -hmm. Um, Like a Pinot Noir glass is a big bowl-shaped glass. Mm -hmm. And so it's like that with beers, too. Like a a traditional Pilsner glass is like a a long cylinder sort of glass. Like a champagne flute? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, A Kolsch glass is kind of like that. Traditionally, like stouts would be out of more of like the big bowl tulip kind of a glass or barrel-aged beers, you'd want that. There's special glasses for IPAs. The whole of like the different glasses, it it just, it directs the liquid to hit your tongue in a different place. Mm. And it also like helps out with the the smelling of the beer. Mm -hmm. Where a big portion of taste is actually your smell. So, which is why you should never drink beer out of a bottle or a can yeah. if you can help it mm-hmm. i mean there's nothing wrong with throwing some cans into your backpack when you're going out to like the beach or to play some disc golf or on a hike or something like that now, these glasses these are just our taster glasses from our tap room um i like them because they show the color of the beer off really nicely mm-hmm. and um the the opening's big enough that you can still smell them while you're drinking it and get mm-hmm. a good idea of the beer what wonderful surprise have you got for us next well um the final beer that I brought is uh, it's one of our anniversary beers. Um, this is Hang Fire. Uh, we do two anniversary beers. Um, Hang Fire was the very first one. And so for our anniversary, which happens May 4th, um, we release our new brew of it. And then what we do is we put that in some barrels 
do something fun with it and release the barrel age version a year later. So um, for our first anniversary, we brewed Hang Fire. Um, for our second anniversary, we, we released the barrel age version. There were four different variations of it. Um, I brought one of them for us to try today. Um, and then the second anniversary beer is a beer called Intense. Imper they're both Imperial Stouts. The Intense was kind of inspired by the s'mores. We added some like uh, cocoa nibs to it, some vanilla to get that kind of like marshmallow and chocolate flavor going with it. Mm -hmm. And so with our next, with our anniversary coming up, we'll have the barrel aged versions of last year's Intense mm -hmm. as our special release and then a fresh batch of hang fire. Um, so the hang fire that I brought this time is our rubus. Uh, rubus was finished with boysenberries and blackberries um, in Cedar Ridge Shorts whiskey barrels. So yeah, the, uh, the other versions of this, um, we we did just like, um, let's see, we had like a, a plain one that was aged in Templeton rye barrels. Turned out really nice. Because we keep getting comments about our Maple Fest lager not being mapley enough, which really Ooh. means it's not syrupy sweet. Right. Yeah. Uh, we did one called the uh, Brunch AF Hang Fire. It's, we intentionally pushed that syrupy sweetness to a level that was I felt ridiculous. This is fun. A little taster of this is great. I, I don't want a whole glass of it. And that's what I loved about this version of the hang fire is just that uh, the berries gave it this neat kind of tart element that mm -hmm. plays along with like the stout and the barrel flavor. Oh, the fourth version. We did a vanilla one. Mm -hmm. The uh, Aquila Nilla hang fire. And that one was really nice too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any bottles of that left. You know, one of the things I like about Iowa Brewery is you're always doing something interesting. You're always doing something new. You're always creating something. Uh, a lot of distillers find something and they just stick with that and they keep making it over and over again. And that's good because, you know, they make some really good beers. But I really love the fact that I can go down to your tasting room and there's always something new that I can try. And I, I really like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, and again, uh, I, I can't say enough, our head brewer Mike Wing deserves all the credit for this. Um, Mike is a super talented brewer and I, I just feel very fortunate that I get to work with him. So we'll see what happens. So come down to the brewery, the tasting room, you can sample just any of these uh, that you brought today? Not, or not is all of them. Um, well, some of these are, are from our cellar. I mean, like the one we're drinking right now, um, we did have a reserve keg out that was on around like New Year's, um, but that beer is no longer available. Uh, Maple Fest is returning. Uh, we're bottling this year's batch next week, and then we'll be putting it on our tap room the same week and Maple Fest is happening at the, the Nature Center. Mm -hmm. um, so that's coming back. Um, the Bohemian Rapids, New England Lager, Mango Bling Jacket, all three of those are available right now. Up the Oja, hallway is on. Mm -hmm. um, Moray, that one's um, unfortunately no longer available. We do still have four packs for sale in our tap room though. Um, but uh, we're through all of our kegs currently. We've, we've set some aside, so when the new batch of Moray comes out this next fall, um, we will have last year's version to put on tap, and I think we still have a keg of the prior year, so we might be able to get like three years in a row going. Any other new wonderful things? Yeah, this month, we already talked about this month's release, the, <laughs> the, the Oreo version of the Oja. Mm -hmm. um, next month is going to be the our Hoppy Limited release, and so we're bringing back Spicoli. Mm. Uh, S Spicoli is our triple IPA. <laughs> it's going to be releasing for April 20th. To elaborate on this beer, just because... Uh, so, um... Hops and cannabis are from the What's same up? plant Thank family. You. If you've had some IPAs before, you might think, oh, hey, this might be a little weedy. Yeah. Um, so Spicoli is a big giant IPA we make <laughs> to really accentuate sure. those sort of uh, dank qualities. Okay. Named after the mm -hmm. Jeff Spicoli no. character from okay. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So are it's, you going to have a... Fast Times at Ridgemont High movie showing when uh, you. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, I think that's in the works. We are going to have a big release party for it for that, um, and I, I believe so. Do you still do your pajama party? We do. That's uh, oh, so. That's yeah. um, uh, oh. that's a Thanksgiving thing. Yeah, it's it? a Thanksgiving thing. It's not so much a pajama party. Our first year we were open. Um, head brewer Mike was uh, had asked. He's like, hey, so. Uh, this year, like, family's coming over for Thanksgiving, but you know what? For, like, the last 10-plus years, when we all get together for Thanksgiving morning, we just kind of all 
drink out on the front lawn in our bathrobes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very inspired by Cousin Eddie from yes. the Christmas Vacation movie. Yeah. And he's wondering if we could do that, host that in our tap room, since his family's all going to be in town. And I'm like, wow, oh, that sounds amazing. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Thanksgiving morning, we open at 7 a.m., uh, close promptly at noon. Um, encourage everyone just to basically roll out of bed and come drink some beer with us. <laughs> we provide some snacks. Um, so you get people showing up in their bathrobes and their floppy hunter hats and, <laughs> and it's their moose class. It's a fun time. Uh, I, that first year we weren't sure if anyone else was going to come or if it was just going to be all of us just drinking together. Um, but yeah, people showed up. Uh, the next Thanksgiving, when I got there, let's see, it was about a quarter to seven. There was maybe ten people at the door waiting to get in. <laughs> wow. Um, this last year, uh, the place was just packed and uh, Mike made a beer for it this time. It was called Cousin Eddie's Breakfast Ale. Uh, we mm-hmm. still have that on tap. It's a big 12.5% Imperial Brown Ale uh, with co- locally roasted coffee. Wow. Mm. Um, we're going to do that every year. And uh, yeah, it's it's a good time. It's a, a really perfect way to pregame your family dinner. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's, it's one of my favorite things that we do. Is there um, anything else you'd like to add? Maybe you should plug your uh, location. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're located downtown Cedar Rapids. Uh, we're on the corner of 3rd Street and 7th Avenue, right across from the YMCA. Our tap room is open seven days a week. Uh, we open at 2 o'clock on the weekdays and 11 or noon on the weekends, depending on the season. Mm-hmm. If you're watching this. It's a good place. We are strictly a production brewery with a tap room, so we don't have a kitchen. We're never going to do food. Um, we do welcome food being brought in. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Nothing aside from thanks for having me here. Oh, of course. Oh, Joseph, thank, you. thank you so thank much. You. All right, everybody. Once again, this is Both Barrels. I'm Byrne. It's my father, Curtis. We have Leah joining us. We have Lori and Joseph <laughs> from Iowa Brewery. We'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and of course, share this video around if you enjoyed it. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you.